we need to think not just about the euro, but also what to anticipate from China with its news this morning and things weakening there. I realize it's not as much of a currency play with what happens there, but just this weaker growth story that's marching through, that's going to be a big issue when it comes to the currency markets. Kathy, what should Absolutely. we anticipate? Um, what's really interesting about the uh, Chinese trade data is that they're not the only ones reporting terrible trade numbers lately. And so I think this is definitely a global story. And I think a lot of the pain is being felt around the world. And the problem that we have is that there's no set date for this quote unquote signing summit. And there's been a lot of reports that perhaps China wants to, you know, back down certain terms or want certain amenable terms on their front. So I think you know there is a you know the propensity by this administration of changing their minds at the last minute. China's being very reserved about this. And I think there's a desperate a need from you know you're hearing that from the European Central Bank, you're hearing that from the US central banks for um, protectionism to really be stepped back. And I think you know until we get that announcement, you know, a lot of um, countries uh, will be on edge as their data shows the deterioration from you know this kind of from protectionism. How come, how come other countries are suffering at the same time? If this is a trade war between China and the United States, how does that kind of ripple through? Well, it's slower Chinese growth, and you know China consumes uh, China consumes a tremendous amount of um, global products, and I think you know you're seeing that um, being affected pretty heavily in Europe too. And there's a fear that you know perhaps those car tariffs that we haven't really talked about for a while could the still U the EU car yes, tariffs. exactly the EU car tariffs um, could still be on the table, and I think that's what you know the European Central Bank is fearing. That's why the euro has been so weak too. So a lot of cross currents, Joe. Yeah. How, how do you kind of navigate them? What do you think when it comes to currency markets? Well. Well, for the currency markets, they're responding to the economic stuff behind it. Um, when you look around the world, you're going to look, where is the world going to get economic growth from? There are really only two places it can come from to any degree that's going to power the world economy. That's, of course, the United States and China. The degree that the trade deal will alleviate some of this problem. Now, is there going to be a trade deal? Everyone assumes that there will be from start to finish. Sooner or later, we'll get a trade deal. But it, even if we do, and say we do, and say it's a good trade deal, it will still take a quarter or two for that to actually power up, to change, and to drive the world economy. Places like Europe don't have a lot of internal growth, and I don't think they're going to get it. The demographics are not there, and the structure of their economies doesn't provide the kind of growth you get here. So if you get this trade deal, it might alleviate it. But you know, the longer it goes on and the more problems the world economy develops, the greater the chance that the deal won't be enough to power things up. All right, let me ask you a, maybe a, a counterintuitive question. We look at it in 112 on the euro. Like, right. Oh, it's the lowest level in a while. That's right. I look at it and I say, why is the euro still at 112 versus the dollar? Because when you're looking at Brexit <laughs> talks, when you're looking at how the euro may be crumbling, how there's a lot of political uncertainty that's, that's coming true. up in places like Germany and France, Absolutely why true. is it still at 112? Well, I think it will go. I think it'll go down to 110 at the least, and then 108. I mean, I don't think the euro long term has any prospects. If you look at what what Mario said yesterday, one of the interesting things I think he said was that uh, he said interest, uh, negative interest rates have been a success. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to make any comment uh, by on whose that. Judgment. By whose judgment? And if this is success, then what does failure look like? But that seems to me the type of statement you would make in preparation for the future where the central bank might actually try and move huh. to negative rates. That is no endorsement of the European economy by the European central banker. And um, I think if we take a look at the yield spreads or just yields in general, the last time we were at these levels in terms of German 10-year rates was in 2016. And at that time, we were at right these levels, 112 in the euro, right. and it was right before we dropped to 110 down to 104. Right. So I think that's the same type of course, as Joe mentioned, that we're on right now because the external factors are really put it, pushing the pair lower. So if you think the euro is headed lower, what is your favorite currency if you had to pick one as being a strong currency around the globe? Well, straight up euro dollar, I think. I think the Fed is, you know, pretty much, regardless of how quick or slow they do this, they're on a tightening course. And the ECB, as Joe just mentioned, um, have made it very clear that there's no action that they're going to take this year. And they don't even think that, the, that Teltro 3 will be enough to mitigate the effects of Brexit as well as protectionism. So if this wound that this um, band that they put in the wound is really going to get septic, you know, negative rates could be something they revisit. Joe, you agree with that, even uh, with President Trump saying, you know, that some Sometimes a weaker dollar can be a good thing, not necessarily standing by a strong dollar as we've seen in the past. <laughs> That's true. I mean, presidents tend to say that yeah. um, for trade purposes. I don't think it's going to have much effect on the market. The economic drivers and the interest rate drivers are only pointing in one direction. I don't see how you will get a weaker dollar when the U.S. economy is the strongest one and it seems to be doing well. 
when the Fed, although it's not raising rates, at least is not worried enough to start dropping rates. And the ECB certainly is. They made that very clear. That's a comparison. You can put any kind of rhetorical gloss on it that you want, but the facts underneath are a weaker uh, European economy and a much stronger U.S. economy in comparison.